Hello and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I wanted to talk to you guys about Harry Potter, A History of Magic. This is an exhibit that was at the British Library in the UK, I think it was last year, and I actually got to go and experience it myself. It was amazing and I'm super excited because now it's going to be also in New York at the New York Historical Society from October 5th, 2018 to January 27th, 2019. So if you're interested in learning a little bit more about what this exhibit is like, then stay tuned to this video. So in order to show you what you'll experience if you go to Harry Potter A History of Magic, I'm going to delve into the History of Magic book. So it's kind of like a companion book that you can purchase for the exhibit as well as the guidebook that I picked up at the British Library when I went to the exhibit. I'm going to go over some of the different sections and use the main book, um, which you can purchase on Amazon and most book retailers. So this is the main book. I'm going to go through this because unfortunately they don't actually let you film at the exhibit, at least not when I went at the British Library. Who knows, this might change in New York. And um, because of that, I'll just be showing you guys through the book some of the images and things that you'll get to experience. I'm obviously not going to give you major spoilers or show you everything Thing, but I wanted to just give you an idea of what this exhibit is like in case you're interested in purchasing a ticket. Now overall, my very first thing I have to say is that yes, I do recommend it. I absolutely love this exhibit. If you're a fan of history, if you're a fan obviously of Harry Potter, then you will really enjoy this. It essentially goes into old textbooks and paintings and artwork and all of the literature and things that essentially inspired J.K. Rowling to create the world of Harry Potter. A lot of the concepts that she brings up and things that are in the magical world that we all know and love come from real history. That is essentially what Harry Potter A History of Magic is. The exhibit is really fascinating and it delves into history and how it all inspired the wizarding world of today. This is Harry Potter A History of Magic. So this is the book that you can purchase from the British Library exhibit. It is available online and I will leave all the links down below so that you can look for the book yourselves. Um, in addition, I, I'm pretty curious to see whether the new exhibit in New York will have a different version of this book. I suspect that most of the exhibit will be the same, but you never know. They might want to just uh, make an extra buck and have a new version version of the book that coincides with the New York exhibit. But let's delve into this book and show you some of the things that you'll see during the exhibit. Much like the book is broken down into different sections, so is the exhibit. So in the exhibit, you will start off with potions and alchemy, then go to herbology, charms, astronomy, divination, defense against the dark arts, end up at magical creatures, and at the very end you'll get past, present, and future, which is essentially about the writing process that J.K. Rowling went into while creating the Harry Potter books. The unique thing about this exhibit is that it goes into the history of magic, how it is written in textbooks and in artwork. So in this case here we have the Bezoar goat. So much like in Harry Potter, when Harry finds the Bezoar stone and uses that to save Ron, we can see how in history this actually was something that was magical, that was written about. In the alchemy section, you'll also learn more about the history of the Philosopher's Stone. There was a really interesting scroll called the Ripley Scroll, which shows the reader how to make the Philosopher's Stone, but good luck interpreting this. <laughs> In addition, during the exhibit, you'll learn a little bit more about the historical figure that is Nicholas Flamel. So no, J.K. Rowling did not invent Nicholas Flamel. He actually was a famous alchemist, and you'll learn a little bit more about him during the exhibit. The alchemy section really ties in well to Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone, the first book in the series. And throughout the exhibit, you'll also get to see a lot of the notes that J.K. Rowling kept while she was writing the original novels. The next section in the exhibit is Herbology. This was one of my favorite sections. I loved seeing original artwork and manuscript 
dating back centuries that taught us a little bit more about mandrakes. It was really interesting too to see how so many different cultures have obviously cultivated different plants for their medicinal uses. Charms was the next section up in the exhibit, and it delved into the idea of witchcraft and wizardry as it's represented in history. They had old notebooks in the exhibit that had different spells, charms like this one, which was for love, and they go into how the broomstick is so closely associated to the witch. Astrology was another beautiful section in this exhibit. Though maybe we didn't learn too much from Professor Trelawney, this area of the exhibit will definitely leave you with a lot of new knowledge, including where Sirius's name came from. Old trinkets and globes all illustrate how humans have always looked to the sky for meaning. The exhibit also delves into different ways that humans have tried to divine the future, including how to read tea leaves, and we know how well that went for Harry. Defense Against the Dark Arts was an integral part of the Harry Potter series, and it was a wonderful section in this exhibit. From the lore of snakes and magic to werewolves, the exhibit does a wonderful job of examining humans' fascination with the dark arts. Here, we also learn a lot about fantastic creatures and how they inspired J.K. Rowling to create fantastic beasts and where to find them. There's also a section dedicated to care of magical creatures. In this section, we learn about giants like Hagrid, trolls, poltergeists, and ghosts. And speaking of ghosts, we get to see J.K. Rowling's own sketches of what she envisioned them to look like in the series. We also get to see beautiful artwork by Jim Kay, who brought much of the Harry Potter world to life with his art. Throughout the exhibit, they tie in all of the historical elements to the original works of J.K. Rowling. And at the very end, it's wonderful to see all of her original manuscripts and many first drafts of the books with her notes in them and doodles. I really hope that you enjoyed that little glimpse into what you'll experience if you go to the Harry Potter A History of Magic exhibit. Again, it's essentially all of the magic of Harry Potter and where it came from, with beautiful nods to the work that J.K. Rowling did herself. You'll get to see some of her manuscripts and doodles of all of the characters that we know and love, and you'll also get to know a little bit more about what inspired them and where they might have come from, from history. So if you love Harry Potter, this is definitely something that you should add to your bucket list. Again, it's from October 5th, 2018 to January 27th, 2019 in New York. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Love and Lumos always. Bye.